Currently, the M2A3 variant is the standard Bradley IFV in service with the U.S. Army. Most previous Bradleys were upgraded to this standard. The main role of the M2A3 is to provide protected transport for infantry squad into close contact with the enemy. It offered a significantly higher level of protection for the dismounts than a contemporary M113A3 armored personnel carrier. Vehicle is armed with a two-man turret, fitted with a 25mm dual-fed Bushmaster chain gun. There is a TOW anti-tank guided missile launcher loaded with two TOW-2 anti-tank missiles. Two reload missiles are carried inside the vehicle. Additionally, up to two portable Javelin anti-tank missiles can be carried inside the vehicle. There is a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun. The M2A3 uses add-on explosive reactive armor of new generation. It provides protection against shoulder-launched anti-tank rockets, RPGs, and anti-tank missiles. Interior was lined with spa liner. Front arc of the M2A3 protects against 30mm armor-piercing rounds. This IFV was tested with an active protection system and essentially could be fitted with one at some point. The M2A3 is operated by a crew of three, including commander, gunner, and driver. Vehicle can carry seven dismounts. Troops enter and leave the vehicle via a rear power-operated hatch with integral doors. The M2A3 retained the same engine as the previous M2A2. It uses a Cummins VTA903T600 diesel, developing 600 horsepower. It was mated to an automatic transmission. Engine compartment is located at the front of the hull. The whole engine and transmission assembly can be easily removed and replaced. This IFV was badly underpowered. Maximum road speed was just 56 km per hour, unrefueled range was 400 km. Other capabilities could not be integrated as the vehicle reached its weight limit. A more powerful engine was required for further upgrades. Despite its bulky appearance, the M2A3 is amphibious with the use of inflatable pontoons. These are attached to the front and sides of the vehicle prior to entering the water. On water, it is propelled by its tracks. It can cross inland waterways, such as lakes and rivers, 